Right, so today I'm going to show you how I've made my beehives ready for next year, and actually one of them for this year. So I buy my crow, um, I buy my roof, I buy my floor, everything else I make, crown boards included. So I've got most of my stuff cut and actually some assembled. So I'm going to make some supers and some brew boxes today, and then film it, show you how I do it all. These are measured where I'm cutting is the height of my no it's not sorry it's the width of my brew box uh, brood or super actually so it's the width of my brew box or my super the reason I do this is I can cut it and then depending on what I need I can then make brew boxes out of it or supers out of it so here's one of my boxes I made last week um, so there's two heights or two widths, where yeah, there's two heights on widths. So there's this one here, and then there's one from there to there. So this one I'm about to cut is from here to here. So that is 42 centimeters um, wide. I've measured, uh, yeah, that one's 42 centimeters wide, and the other one is 46 centimeters wide. Edge of this blade here, with the edge of this foot plate is exactly three centimeters so I've measured my 42 on this board add my three centimeters and then take a piece of timber that is perfectly straight you, you need it perfectly straight clamp it down to stop it from moving Now once you've got it clamped, best practice for one of these, especially with this one being a cordless one, is to set your depths. Best way to do it is to line up on the edge like that and set your depth so it's just the tiniest fraction deeper than your the, the material you're cutting. That way, especially with a cordless, your battery will last longer. You get a better performance from the, the, the motor and your blade will last longer as well. So, when doing this, make sure you've got all the proper equipment. I'm outside, so I don't need a, a dust mask, but I've got my ear defenders or ear protection, and I've got safety glasses I'm gonna put on in a second, and some gloves. Also, make sure you're cut, if you're cutting with one of these, that you're not gonna cut into whatever is holding up your piece of uh, material. Straightforward. Nice straight cut. Right, I've already cut off the 46 one, and now I've got my 42. So next I'm gonna cut into sections because I'm making supers. I'm cutting this piece in here, so your frames will sit on this on the inside. So as we're cutting the internal piece there that the frames will sit on, we want it to be 12 and a half centimeters high. Take our measure of tape. 12 and a half plus 3 is going to be 15 and a half centimetres. Take our nice piece of straight timber again and line it up on those pencil marks. So I don't bend this piece of timber, the one I use is a straight edge. I've got two off cuts of plywood at each end. So all I, all I need to do is clamp that there. Okay, so now I've done all of them, they're stacked off to one side over there. This is this side, taller side of your super. So this is 64 wide again. This time it wants to be 15 centimeters high. But 15 centimeters high, I'm measuring at 18. Again, come here, measure at 18. Got all them cut and stacked again. We now have a stack of these 
which are 46, sorry, yeah, 46 by 15, 42 by 12 and a half. So we take our bigger ones, which is 46 by 15. I'm going to put them on these as spaces. So I've made myself a template with a straight edge there. Line up the straight edge on the bottom here. The bottom of this should sit flush. That straight edge will sit flush. For the brood box, I drill all three holes on both sides. For the supers, it's the middle hole and the bottom hole. Once you've sanded all your edges down, I've put these screws in just slightly by hand. That will sit there, and the smaller one will sit flush here. So I've got these. So these are the spaces. So these are exactly 25 mil depth, and that's just a piece of car, uh, plywood there off cut to butt up against that edge. So I'll use this clamp to hold it in place. It means I've got one hand free. So prop that up against there on the inside. So they're all, it's got a perfect distance in. That's all perfectly square. It's all held in. It's got a perfect flush edge at the bottom. And it's exactly set in perfectly square for the reels. Now we've got one box, perfectly square, all the joints are perfectly spaced and every single box will be the same. So I've checked the measurements against my first hive which I bought, this spot on. So now I'll show you how to do the top rail where your um, frames will sit and I'll show you how to do the bottom rail with a drip rail on it. Right, so now as you can see in the back there we've got a big we got a stack of um, of sofas ready for reels. So I've already set up my router. So what I've done is I've set it up to go one centimetre deep at its maximum and one centimetre in. If you do it this way you do not need to buy the metal runners that go on the inside of your frames. So it's just more than the thickness of the thickness of your frame. And that, went set, that one centimetre is how much the frame will hang over the inside of the plywood. So I'm using a router here. Um, this is actually an older one. You can use a circular saw to do it. It's a bit more faffy for, for these small amounts. So There'll not be much talking in this because it's very noisy. So All I'm going to do is plunge the router in and see if it moves well. If it doesn't move too well, I'll run it at a half height, go full length, and then come back and then do a second drop and drop it down to full height and then go again. I flipped it over is it seems to cut better in one direction so I'll try it again cutting the other way Now we're going to cut the chamfer on here. Usually about a 45 degree angle. I've been doing 35s recently, which work really, really well. So 35. So 
set my angle. Set this in place. So I'm almost touching the far corner of this timber. I'm almost touching the corner here with the blade. I want to drop the blade a little bit in so I know that it's going to go all the way through. Yep, it should go through all the way. If not, I'll adjust it again. Straight forward and just cut through the whole length. This is all cut. Next thing to do is to measure them up to 46 centimeters, cut them into sections, and then fit them to our boxes. Right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to measure this at 46 centimeters. Cut this at 46. So I've just stacked some off cut some off cuts and some other timbers on here just to give me a bit more of a spacer this just so it holds this uh, timber flush on the base plate. Then what I'm going to do is cut both of these at the same time. As long as you get your measurements right and everything is butted up perfectly flush. Use a block of wood, make sure everything's perfectly level. Make sure your blade is perfect where it needs to be. Make sure your hands are well out of the way. And cut. There's my first two. Do it again. But this time, you can use your cut piece to line up your blade. So let's go further over. And again, make sure it is perfectly flush. So now I'll cut the next two. Done. So I'll now go through off camera, cut the rest of these, and then we'll start sticking them on. They're ideal when they're a good snug fit. And they fit nice and snug in there. Best using a level surface, make it all perfect. Right. So, turn it on its side, so you can see what I'll do, and drill three holes, again just quickly push them in by hand. I get the heads that are self countersunk so it just neatens everything up, it's also because I don't have a countersink bit. So then, Slide this one in. This one I'm actually going to clamp because it's a little bit looser. It's got a good fit to it, it just moves around a bit. You're left with a small lip there normally, and that's your B space. So it's a self spacing uh, for this. So I'll do the other side. Right, that's done. It's now ready for a lick of paint and then ready to go outside. Right, so if you like this video, please like, subscribe, um, also find me on Instagram. You get photos, updates, and stuff in between all the videos. So, behind me, we've been doing a, like a bee garden. So, we've got loads of flowering plants going in ready for next year. So, you, if you've been on Instagram, you'll have seen this being sort of halfway through being built. Um, and it's not quite finished yet, but we're getting there. Um, also, so you don't need all this fancy equipment, hand saws, even in, in the manual screwdriver you can use. Uh, just make sure you've got a good straight edge when doing it. Yeah, please like, subscribe, follow me on Instagram, and we'll catch you in the next video.